the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Our second reading today from St. Peter, he talks about this word sojourning, sojourning. He says, conduct yourself with reverence during the time of your sojourning. And this so, sojourning means exile. It means when you're in a foreign place. So it could be like a different country, you know, Mexico, Canada, or just a, a strange place, California, something like that. And, but he's talking about He's not talking about travel. He's not talking about place. He's talking about our whole life as Christians. He says that because we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, which is more precious than gold or silver, we have now become exiles upon the earth. That we have a true homeland in heaven. And that is where our citizenship is. But here we are just passing through. We are sojourners. We are exiles. We are strangers. We are aliens to this land, and um, we are looking for a place to come because God our Father has given us a kingdom to which we belong and which we will uh, uh, go to one day. And so we are in this exile. You know, I like the prayer, the Hail Holy Queen. Have you ever thought about it? One of my favorite parts is when we, we say to Mary, after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of whatever it is. Let's see, how does it go? It's hard to say those things. Um, but after this, our exile. So we truly are exiles in this land. And we're supposed to make our home here, but we're supposed to keep our hearts and minds fixed on our eternal home where we are headed to. And this word sojourney or exile in the original Greek is parochios, which means uh, which, which that's what it means, but it's where we get the word perish. It's where we get the word perish. And I didn't know this. I never thought about that. Why is this called St. Patrick Parish? Why are you all called parishioners? Why am I all called a parish priest? I never thought about that, but this is where we get that word because our parish is a community of exiles. It's a community of people that are sojourning. It is a people that are away from home, that are gathered together as one. And I think that's really remarkable. And this um, came about really early on in the church. They always felt that they were not at home here, on their way to the eternal home. And it was St. Irenaeus that we know, he was the first one to call individual churches parishes. And he died in the year 202. So this is a very long-standing tradition within the church. And we know that while we are here, and our parish has a d definite mission, and we have a, a mission statement that we try to live by, and it goes something like this. As Christian disciples, we seek to love Jesus and to make Him loved through the celebration of the Eucharist, the teaching of His saving doctrine, the works of charity, and a service of excellence to our community. That's why we're here as a community of exiles. We are supposed to offer to everyone a welcome a place where their deepest and truest needs can be met and fulfilled. A place where they can find hope and meaning in their life. A place where we can provide a service to them. The spiritual works of mercy like counseling the doubtful and instructing the ignorant. Or the corporal works of mercy like feeding the hungry or clothing the naked. It's a place where we teach God's saving word because everybody is thirsting in their hearts and souls for the Word of God, and here we receive it. We come to the waters of life and drink very deeply, and it's here that we celebrate the sacraments, most especially the Eucharist, which, as I said, is the most important thing we do as a parish. We come together on Sundays as a community of exiles, and here we offer to God our Father through Jesus in the Holy Spirit the greatest of all prayers, the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And so just to conclude, I want to look at the Gospel because it tells us a lot about the Mass. So the Gospel is about the road to Emmaus. And just to summarize it very quickly, you know, the two guys heading away from Jerusalem on the day of the resurrection, and Jesus comes among them. And then they have that conversation, 
And then he opens up to them the scriptures, and their hearts start to burn with love. But they don't yet recognize him. And that's the strangest thing. He's only been dead three days, and they still don't recognize him. And they say that Cleopas is actually his uncle, and his uncle doesn't even recognize they were not supposed to recognize him. They were prevented from recognizing him. And then they go to Emmaus, and they stop in that place. And there at table, it says that Jesus took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it. And we know that this is referring to the Eucharist. Because the only other time that St. Luke uses these words is at the Last Supper, when Jesus took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to them. And this word, the breaking of bread in St. Luke, uh, means the Eucharist, both in his Gospel and in the Acts of the Apostles. And so this, this, uh, this Road to Emmaus story shows us exactly the structure of our Mass. This is what we do, too. First we gather, and Jesus is among us, where two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst of them. And then we read the sacred scriptures, and they're explained to us. And hopefully our hearts start to burn with love for God and out of reverence for what we are hearing. Then we have the second part of Mass, where the bread and the wine are brought forward and placed on this sacred altar. And then we offer those prayers with the priest, um, to the Father, in his Son, and through the Holy Spirit. That way um, we can receive from him the gift of the Holy Eucharist. And so there's that twofold structure of the Mass, the liturgy of the Word and the liturgy of the Eucharist, and it goes back all the way to the very beginning, and you can go anywhere in the world, any Catholic Church, and even the Eastern Orthodox, they always have this same structure. First the re reading of the Scriptures, then the breaking of bread in the Holy Eucharist. And it's, it's remarkable that in the Gospel we hear that Jesus breaks bread and they recognize him, and all of a sudden he's gone. It's because he's trying to teach us that from now on he's going to be with us always, but he's not going to be with us in you know, the risen form where he's present to us. He's going to be present in the Holy Eucharist. And so it's a really remarkable story that teaches us about as a parish of exiles. And so we should always think about that, keeping our hearts and minds fixed on our eternal homeland, knowing that here we are strangers and exiles to this land. We are sojourners. But we also have this foretaste in the Eucharist of what is to come, where we receive Jesus, first in his word that is preached to us, then in the Holy Eucharist where we receive him into our very bodies. And that is a remarkable gift as we make our way through this life into eternity.